Hi guys, it's Tao from Shine Bright Design and today we are doing a shading tutorial. And basically we're going to do five of the following techniques and we're going to do it in different colours. So we're going to do a one colour pencil technique followed by a two colour pencil possibly extending to three. So, alright guys, so we're going to do the following methods. One is scumming, one is cross hatching, one is back and forth directional strokes, stippling and cross hatching. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to start off with scumming and I'm going to do one colour at the top and then I'm going to add additional colours with two colours. I Really, I should just do, um, I shouldn't do two colours with shading, um, but because when you're using two colours, it's kind of layering with colour and that's another tutorial that I plan to do, but we might touch on it. And I might show you guys what's it like shading with two colors doing the same technique so that's what we'll focus on but in terms of um, layering with color that will be in a later tutorial all right so let's do scumming now I use this uh, I use this a lot in my tutorials and when I'm talking about scumming it's basically small circular motions so Basically all you want to do with a sharp pencil is do small circular motions like this and do it with a very light hand as well. The scumming method is one of my favorite methods and I use this method mainly on skin or anywhere that needs to be really, um, really blurry, smooth. Um, basically I don't, anywhere that doesn't, doesn't require streaks. Um, but scumming is one of the most, I guess, in my mind, it's the perfectionist type. It's the perfectionist technique in my mind because it reduces no streaks. Um, it's one of those smooth type of um, techniques that you can use in your coloring techniques in your coloring um, artworks. So if you're doing anything else, like say a cross hatching or directional strokes, you can see those strokes very clearly. But that's the effect of those techniques. The scumming method is um, a method that is very seamless, very um, smooth. I like to use this method mainly on skin or on a texture or on a surface that's supposed to be that's supposed to have a smooth um, a smooth texture. For example, skin or say a balloon or um, something shiny, even you know. But if it was something that had texture, like a leaf, or if it was wood, I would do more directional strokes. So I know I'm only doing the technique, but I'm going to show you layering with the technique. Um, and you, you guys understand what layering is, it's just about building those colours and by doing that you're increasing your, um, your application method. So as I'm getting to the highlight point which is here, I'm just lifting up my application, my, my pressure amount. And you can definitely see even though I'm scummy, you can definitely see certain areas where I put more pressure by accident, well, when I wasn't paying attention. I put more pressure where I wasn't needed. So what we're going to do is, to fix that, you just add pressure and build up those layers. And those layers will be, become more smooth. I recommend um, always rotating your pencil as well. If you've been following me for a while, you already know of these techniques and little tips that I mentioned in my videos. I like to rotate, right, because I like to rotate the tip of the pencil. And by doing this, I'm always, I'm extending the life of the, the tip and extending that sharpness. So once I notice that it's starting to get blunt, I rotate it. And then I'll notice that I'm working on a sharper surface. I'm 
might do a technique, or not a video, a technique, but a video on different ways of holding your pencil. And this will be very helpful for those of you who have arthritis or get carpal tunnel. Uh, sometimes I do change the way I hold my pencil in order to get a certain effect. And that's something that I'll probably do in the future as well. The whole layer, the whole layer game is about patience, really. Um, patience upon building those layers up and creating that depth in the pen, in the shape. There you go, that is the ball. Obviously I haven't done any burnishing and I haven't used solvents to make it look almost um, seamless because you can still see the grain there obviously and um, you can't fix that till you build upon more layers and start burnishing things and start using solvents. There will always be that grain because that's just the paper, you know. But that is but scummy. Scummy. I'm going to do all these techniques with you and say if there's time, I'm going to do the two color method. So let's go cross hatching with the same color. So cross hatching um, is basically lines. They're short lines. And you want a sharp pencil doing this as well.
And the way I like to do it is I start off with the shadow section and I build the lines there first. And I start to build up that texture and it's basically all about layers here keeping that pencil sharp And for me, the areas that are shaded more or darker are where you place the tighter lines. So the tighter the lines, the darker the area is that you're shading. The wider the lines are, the lighter the area that you're shading. See how my lines are getting a bit wider? They're getting wider apart. So now I'm just going to build up these layers and one way of doing that is creating more layers. So basically we're just going to keep adding those layers, making sure that your pencil stays sharp. Now this is a technique I use often for colouring because I like that realistic effect. But this is just a technique that some people choose to use. It really depends on your personal preference. I'm going to sharpen my pencil again. See how the darker the area is, the more compact the lines are.
All right, so that is my cross hatching. Now we're going to move on to some back and forth shading or directional strokes. The reason why I call this back and forth um, shading or directional strokes is because you're moving your pencil with the shape. So basically we're going to work with the curve. going to rotate the paper just so it makes it easy for me. It means less movement of my wrist. And that allows me to get, I won't get as tired if I, you know, move my wrist in awkward positions. So basically what you do is your back and forth strokes is going with the shape but at the same time you start off with a heavy hand, not heavy, not really heavy, but like quite heavy, not then. So you go quite heavy compared to normal, and then you lift off that pressure amount as you work into that highlight, highlight section. Now I'm just going to go back into it and keep adding those layers. And as you keep adding those layers, that directional stroke will start to build some depth and give that rounded shape. It's just about controlling your pressure of your pencil and starting to lift that where you feel um, as it's getting lighter and lighter on the shape. So of course my pressure amount on the darker sections are quite, I would say like a medium amount of pressure and then as I work towards the highlight section 
I'm lifting that I'm, I'm lifting that um, amount of pressure I have on my pencil and just lifting it up and then fading it into the highlight section. And this gives me a smooth um, round ball. Now with stippling, I'm going to use um, a different medium okay, to create to this create this stippling technique. technique. I'm going to use my Diablo fine tip pens. And I'm just going to get this red. So lately I'll, I see a lot of stippling in tattoo designs and a lot of tattoo artists will use this technique. Um, I like using fine tip pens because it gives you that consistency of the dot. When you use a pencil, you have to always make sure your point is very sharp and eventually that point is going to get blunter and blunter and obviously you can't uh, have that consistency with your dots. So that is why I like using a marker or a tip pen. You always see it, it's it's fine because it always you always see it in tattoos, but the tattoo gun is quite sharp, quite pointy, so the dots will be consistent. Um, but with a pencil, that's not always the case. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm evenly spreading my dots out. And then what I'm going to do is, so I've had my highlight section and that's completely white and I've dispersed the dots evenly around. Now I'm just going to add more dots tighter together. And then disperse them as I get towards the highlight section. This is a very simplified technique. So if you like full color, I wouldn't recommend this being the technique for you. This is something that I actually don't use myself, but I do, I have practiced and used this in the past, but currently in my technique and my style, I don't use stippling at all in any of my colorings or drawings.
and of course the tighter the dots the darker the dot appears so you don't want to touch the dots you just want to have them tight next to each other so your placement for stippling is very strategic you don't want to overdo it as well so as I was saying, you have to be really strategic where you place these dots and it's a very minimalistic technique but to some people it's their type of technique for me it's not but I always do like to learn new techniques um, and just have them in the back of my pocket you know so that is stippling from me um, I if we do go into adding colouring with layers in the box below, I will show you how to layer with stippling. For now, we're going to go and move on to hatching. So with hatching, I'm going to sharpen my pencil. And hatching is very similar to cross hatching, but we're just going to do one direction and just a diagonal direction. So, So obviously the darker the area, the more compact these lines look. And because this is a circle, we are going to do directional lines. But because it's a circle, you would just definitely go cross hatching. If you were, if you were doing a square, it would be a lot easier. And that is my shading techniques tutorial. Now, we are going to do the same shading techniques with additional colors. Let me get my colors and then I'll start off and show you how to do with them. All right guys, I'm gonna show you scumming with two pencils. So basically you're doing the first um, set of instructions that I did for you. Then we're gonna add other colors to it. So, it's going to be a red ball, of course, but we're going to use blue to create shadow. You want to have a sharp pencil. And now we're just going to create some shadow with it. So with small scumming motion, circular motions, we're going to build our shadow. Make sure your pressure amount is even as well. And you rotate your pencil. Because we're creating shadow with blue, your, layer, your pressure amount is very light. This blue will become almost invisible later on. Now 
now with this coming method, I'm going to start lifting up my pressure and start feathering it out. And what I mean by that is, it's going to get lighter and lighter. There you go. Now, moving on, I'm going to go back in with that red and do the same thing as what we did up here, on top. Eventually you're going to start lifting up your pressure as you get towards the highlight section and as you go closer and closer it gets lighter and lighter. And we want to build the same amount of saturation as what we created in the first circle above. So I want to build up my layers towards where it's shadowed and then work my way up. Still doing those circular motions.
Now we are going to move to cross hatching. Getting your blue again, doing the same type of method. <clears throat> All right, going in with my red now. Alright, now we're going to go back and forth directional shading. So basically you're going to just go in medium 
and then start lifting off your pressure and you're only placing this blue on the shading area taking up the same amount of space that you did in the first circle now you start lifting up that pressure going very very light feathering it out Now we go in with the red. I'm going to work in small sections. So if I wasn't in frame, doing the tutorial is one aspect and filming is another. So you will have to forgive me. Alright, that's one ball. Now I'm going to show you stippling. So doing the same thing as what you did in the ball above. Now I'm just going to compact the, the dots. So where it's darker, I go in with these red dots. And then disperse them as I get closer to the highlight section.
Being very strategic where you place your dots. I'm going to use another two colours with this stippling to create shadow. I'm going in with a darker red. Also being strategic where I place them. I don't want to touch other dots. I can place them next to them, but I don't want to touch them or go on top of them. So you can see the dots are more compact. I want to go in with blue. Being strategic where I place these dots as well, not touching the other dots. They can sit next to them, it's fine, but just don't let the dots just lay on top of each other. Because then what happens is the colour merges And then you slowly start to disperse those blue dots out, being very strategic where you place them. Because what you start to notice now is that the blue is, co is coming through. There we go, that is the filling. Now hatching, I'm not very fond of hatching, but we'll see what happens. Using a sharp blue pencil, we are going to create some 
one directional strokes. Alright guys, so now I'm going to move on and do some hatching. So, we're going to hatch up here and with a sharp pencil, this is just um, one, one directional hatching. So we're just going to do horizontal. So you start up here at the, at the darkest point and then just press hard and you lift. So at the highlight point, you just start to lift off that pressure. This technique isn't really appropriate for, I guess, creating shad like depth, like how we have here and the balls are 3D. It's very much 2D, very similar to the stippling effect. So I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom one up here. I'm going to sharp pencil. See how much a sharp pencil makes a difference? And always rotating that pencil. increase your layer as well. Increase the layers by your pressure amount. Lifting up that pressure amount 
Now let's introduce. Let's actually go back up here and add more layers by increasing our pressure amount at the shadow sections. I'm going to go in with blue. Alright, so these are my shading techniques and I hope you guys have enjoyed them. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed this shading techniques video and using one colour, doing scumming, cross hatching, back and forth strokes, stippling and hatching. And two colours with scumming, cross hatching, back and forth directional strokes, and stippling and hatching. So if you have any questions, please comment below and if you like the video, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or requests, please comment below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.